I'm not sure how I took this long to make this video, but this is the video that deserves to be made of how good is DJ Moore really? I think that he's one of those players that there's just such a wide variety on how some people view him. Some people don't even really think about him when they think about the you know good wide receivers at the NFL level. Some people view him as a top five receiver. You know, Kyle and I always joke about on the podcast how there's 25 top five receivers in football because there's just so many people that get called top five receivers. And the reality is, uh, uh, you know, he's probably one of the 25 top five receivers in football. I think that might be fair to say, but he might be on the low end for me personally is how I view him. That's just how I feel. But let's talk about numbers. Let's talk about tape. Let's talk about maybe uh, should he be higher than that or should he be lower than that? We can start off with box score stats, but I want to say right off the bat, the box score stats do not tell the entire story. So you see that he's been kind of a, a consistent 1,000-yard guy for most of his career, 5,000 yards, 5,200 yards, uh, actually 5,201 yards uh, in his five seasons at the NFL level, uh, also 21 touchdowns. So that's kind of where he averages around for five uh, his five years, it's kind of averages around four uh, touchdowns, 1,000 yards, that's pretty much where he's at. That's his, that's his uh, you know, statistical value. But I would say that his overall value has usually outperformed the box score statistics just because of the tough situations he's been in when he's been with Carolina. If you look at this chart, these are his PFF grades for every year he's been in the league. And you see that he's, you know, these are, I, I would say, better than just a 1,000-yard guy, but not that much better than just a thousand yard guy you know uh the over 80 grade in 2019 very good and it's still posted over 70 grades throughout the entirety of his career and has gotten a good amount of snaps each year of his career over 700 snaps every year of his career and over 800 snaps in each of the last four years there is value in just a guy who's been consistent and there's no doubt about it that even in volatile situations more has remained consistent now, what's his contract? His contract, he's getting paid. He is. There's no denying that. Especially this year, he's getting $20 million. Uh, that's, you know, decent chunk, right? Uh, percentage of the cap is 8.7. But it goes down each of the next two years. And that's not even accounting for the cap that's going to go up each of the next couple of years. At least I believe it's not. Uh, you know, uh, where you have $16 million he's going to get uh, paid in terms of his cap number each of the next two seasons. So that's certainly better and makes you feel a little better. Hey, his, it's actually a little bit front-loaded and it's going to go down a little bit. So he is getting paid. Uh, he's getting paid probably fair value for what he can do. But let's talk about now what he can do. Watching his tape, this is a big chunk of where DJ Moore's value comes in. It's the over the middle stuff. It's the finding gaps in coverage, that kind of stuff, which some people look at and say, oh, well, that's not as valuable as winning against one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that. But there still is a ton of value in this. I still think that, you know, there's a skill to this kind of thing, and the best receivers are ones who can do this. Watch how when this play begins, you're going to see that DJ Moore right here is about to get into a gap in coverage. PJ Walker, I think, doing a good job of timing this, but watch what Moore does. Moore is able to get to his spot, make the grab, and turn up field and pick up even more yards after the catch. Uh, these things don't look as impressive on tape, but trust me, there is a skill to this. There is a skill to figuring out where those soft spots in coverage are in finding ways to get there. So this is a lot of where his value comes in. This is a lot of where his yards uh, come in. But again, there's value in it. And going over here, just because you're winning against zone coverage doesn't mean that that's all you're doing is just finding a soft spot in zone. No, there's other ways to win in zone. This is an example where it's essentially going to turn into a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You have a corner who is staying deep uh, and with Moore's route, which is going deep, that's basically what's, you know, what the matchup is going to be is a corner one-on-one -on -one against Moore. Watch how one, uh, you see a quarterback takes a snap, looks uh, downfield. I think DJ Moore is a I would say he's an underrated route runner. I think people don't realize uh, how good he is at kind of selling what he could be doing and really, I think a large part, selling what he could not be doing, not giving away what he is doing. You see right here, he's kind of, you know, at this point, not giving anything away. You don't know where he's running. Is he going over the middle? Is he going to the outside? Is he running deep? He has not given anything away. So when he does cut to the outside, the corner eventually follows him, but it's a bit too late then. He's able to get the step, and because of that, Moore is able to make the catch and get a completion. These are the things Moore is capable of. He can 
win on the outside. That's not what he's known for. And there are receivers who are better at that kind of stuff than him, but he can still do it. And that's still a part of his game. And I would say he can win one-on-ones as well, where something like this, it's going to be, uh, it's man coverage here. So, okay, here's the man coverage. If he's just a zone beater, well, can he beat man? We'll watch how one this play begins. You see that right here. Again, it's that beginning portion of the route, the stem portion of the route, as they call it, because, you know, it's like the route tree, right? So the stem part of it. Think about a tree, the stem part of it, of you're running up, which branch are you going to take? You don't give it away until you're right about the cut. So when he does cut over the middle, he gets wide open, and then he's, off to the races and is able to pick up a good chunk play there so these are the things that DJ Moore is capable of and the reality is the Chicago Bears certainly I think on their roster just don't have a guy who can do that stuff and having a guy who could be a hey on third down and six he's someone we could look towards that's definitely you know worth value there's no denying that also, I got to break down this play just because it was one of the most fun plays from last season. This is the, P, you know, really a great PJ Walker play, but I'll, you know, I'll bring it up, up. Why not? You see where DJ Moore is on the field. Worth mentioning the situation. It's essentially a Hail Mary situation. The Panthers need a touchdown here to, they're down seven, uh, down six at this point. So they need a touchdown to, uh, you know, tie the game and then an extra point would win it. As you see, P.J. Walker takes a snap, and, you know, because of the situation, Falcons are in a very much a prevent defense, but for some reason, they kind of uh, don't stay super far deep. I think they didn't expect Walker to be able to throw it this far, but again, while they didn't make the right read, D.J. Moore does. Watch as when Walker makes this throw, Moore is able to outrun the other two players and somehow make the catch uh, and tie the game. He then uh, took his helmet off uh, on the field, which was a penalty, and uh, they ended up missing the extra point because of it. So that wasn't ideal, but the, the catch was really good. So again, kind of more of a fun play than anything, but still, he is capable of making big plays. So as a whole, where do we stand with D.J. Moore? He's a good football player. I mean, there's no denying that. And what's his true value? That's a, it's a fair question, but I do think he's worth his contract. Certainly. I think some people, some people have a hard time kind of understanding true value isn't always equated to how good of a player someone is. Cause DJ Moore is a very good player. Uh, but you know, people have kind of brought up, Oh, this is basically like the bears got an extra first round pick. Cause they got DJ Moore. Uh, and I guess it depends on what first round pick you're talking about. Certainly not a high first round pick though, just because he is getting paid and there, you do lose some value because he's getting paid. But at the same time, there wasn't a DJ Moore available in free agency. You couldn't go out and sign a DJ Moore right now. And so you pretty much have no choice but to trade for one. And so including it in the first overall trade back, I think is very smart because they knew they needed a wide receiver. They needed to help Justin Fields. They just, they had to do it. So much so that they overpaid, I think, uh, giving up the, what ended up being the 32nd overall pick, the, the first rounder uh, in, or their, excuse me, their second rounder uh, in this upcoming draft. And then there's, you know, one of the, the Dolphins lost their first round picks. So the first overall selection of the second round is pick 32. Sorry if that's a little bit complicated, but they gave up that pick for Chase Claypool, who again, I like as a player, but probably isn't worth that pick. Uh, but DJ Moore is uh, a very good player. And again, if Claypool's getting that pick, DJ Moore certainly getting a first rounder than you would think. So uh, basically, I guess it is like he's, you're get, getting a, an extra first rounder. But again, you're getting the value of DJ Moore. He is very valuable and should help out the Chicago Bears a lot. What's his true value? I'll let you be the judge. But was it smart of the Bears to include him in this trade and help out Justin Fields? To me, it's no question. Absolutely, it is. Because the passing game was just completely ineffective last year. Uh, Bears fans will just, just completely blame the receiving core. Uh, I will kind of reserve judgment and say, I don't know. It might have been the receiving core, but it might also be that Fields uh, has some issues in the passing game as well. Uh, but now we'll know. That's the cool thing. I said the same thing about Tua, right? Of Is it the situation around him or is it uh, Tua's issues? And then I think we saw when he was in a great situation, oh no, Tua's, Tua's pretty good. Uh, and I think, you know, I'm going to reserve judgment for Fields as well. Uh, and hopefully for Bears fans, he does what Tua does and is uh, an MVP candidate, but then stays healthy. That's what uh, we're hoping. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.